Hello. Good morning. Hey guys. Good afternoon. Good evening. Good morning. Howdy, howdy. How are you guys? Good. Good. Coming, trying to ramp back up from a, a vacation holiday week here. Oh, yeah. Which is surprisingly hard considering how nothing I did. <laughs> like, it was like the lowest, like my, like a usual holiday week is like, you know, like from a stress and activity and all that kind of stuff. And like this week, it was like, you know, like one little day, but somehow getting, getting like just the engine back up is nice. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Different, different, challenges, different challenge this year maybe so maybe it's a i mean too much turkey <laughs> a trip to fan it does have its effect <laughs> yeah maybe i've been just eating tryptophan for eight months that's what it is <laughs> <laughs> that's what it feels like hey pete um, morning, pete how are you charles what's going on i'm I'm actually sitting in a similar mode over here. Um, in uh, not not so much in general, but like I, I'm actually on a similar schedule to some of you. Um, I've been a late night person kind of forever, but I, I'm I'm actually just uh, kind of getting my engine going for the day, and it's four in the afternoon over here. Mm -hmm. um, but we have uh, our Kiko Lab sessions uh, Mondays, and it went it went late. It actually went six hours last night. Wow. Um, in the end. And so, yeah, I'm just um, looking forward to, to seeing what's going on over here in the in the jam session. And um, I was, I mean, there's a lot of threads kind of spread around the OGM sphere. And um, I was, I didn't quite finish a response to um, uh, our group one from the workshop actually yeah, I was um, thinking again reminded again for, um, by one of our group members team members um, that we still have some follow-up to do and um, so I don't know I guess I'll wait till we officially start here but I probably have some more thoughts along that theme of the workshop and follow-up in the two the teams groups and, and whatnot um, now I'll probably just start to babble a bit because uh, Pete and I have been talking a lot uh, about a few things, including the OGM forum and the CSC Mattermost and bridging and um, scanning and reporting and things like that. Um, I have also been in the conversation about values, um, which is another kind of side channel at this point. I mean, there's there's a bunch. Um, that I'm, I'm, I'm feeling and holding now with regard to OGM. Yeah, maybe that's enough for me for the for the moment, and I will continue to orient my windows here. I know that. Um, hey, Judy. Good morning. I know Judy was, and I, Judy, I apologize that I went just so dark for two weeks, but it was a necessary unplugging. But I know Judy's been doing, you know, you and. Trey have been pulling the thread along from our breakout as well and, and you know, looking to probably connect and share and get feedback on it as well. So I think people are in similar places, Charles, to, I think you probably articulated, even though it's unique for each of us where we are a similar sentiment and sort of feeling as we come into this call. Um, and I know yeah. Matt and here, you know, I know the, the intent of this call is to start to, I don't want to say weave together, but somebody find harmony and all this stuff, right? And 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 a path forward. Matt and Jerry, same time. Oh, hey, I was in the wrong room altogether. <laughs> oh, Jerry, I like <laughs> your zoom time. your zoom filter of your goatee. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's good, no? It's very it's very lifelike. Very authentic, yes. <laughs> even little even little gray and grizzly. <laughs> I was hoping that I'd hoped I was hoping that there was a be a little bit more trimmed off of that. Uh, you know, that's just down to a soul patch right now. It's like the last fight. It's it's heading that way, yeah. It's heading <laughs> that way. But I, I kind of like the broader thing. I don't know. Yeah, no, I mean it looks it looks good on you. I'm not saying a soul patch would look good on you, but you know. From the political given, trends. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh we're, now we're both drinking coffee. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like it's we're exactly in an episode of Between Two Ferns or something. 
We should coordinate where everybody takes a sip of coffee at the same moment in a call. I am. <laughs> oh, hey, Charles, how are you? Good morning. Cheers. Matt, good morning. Cheers. <laughs> Judy. Judy, there you go. Is anybody missing a cup of something? <laughs> <laughs> Judy, you couldn't possibly finish that. I'll take some, please. <laughs> oh, yes. It's my I'm double, double. <laughs> it's my normal. Hamilton's um, ready. That'd be great if you had like a little spigot right in front of your computer where you could just put your cup under and somebody else could pay for it to fill up with the with the with the beverage. I, I totally agree. Actually, <laughs> I I so like sipping on things. I also have a cup of tea as an alternative. So. I do too. Uh, if I had a coffee maker in my office, I would die of a heart. I, mean, I already drink way too much coffee as it is. I can't even imagine. Well, I've been trying to break myself of the habit in my other location in the kitchen where I'm frequently working at the table right beside me with a half turn away is one of those jug bottle dispensers with hot and cold. <laughs> and I discovered I was really using it a lot more often than I needed to. And I should just get up and walk across the room and heat the water and the tea and pour it. You know? <laughs> it was just didn't need to be quite that lazy. Well, I guess I could comment that, you know, our group too, as Hamilton mentioned, is in pretty much the same place, still trying to pull together the summary from our breakout group session. Um, but I think we're, we're making some progress on that. We just need to kind of convert a, a couple page document of the sort of the stream flow of this, that was scribed along with the, the plan that we had for sort of an actual reality experiment as a proposal for a template that people might consider if we want to try to do sort of simple projects or attempts to do things as a group to sort of frame how we might do that and judge success and stuff like that. Yeah, I and think, Judy, I wonder if, um, and I think, was it Pete that you shared it um, on what and one of the channels or maybe somebody else did a, that like the presentation made by that one group and you said this is what a quest presentation could look like and and those sorts of things um, I'm just wondering like if um, you know I've been rolling some things around my mind but if we don't try to just write a couple of short quest proposals and see what a quest proposal looks like and I I also liked, you know, I've been, I was an advocate for Quest being something which is OGM acting on the outside world, right? And I think people have been pushing back to say, no, Quest can be anything that is a, you know, has a beginning, middle and end to it. And it could be a meta quest or a meta meta quest, right? Or a meta 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 quest, right? And maybe the fourth layer quest is OGM itself. Um, and that, you know, and so you have a, an L0 quest, which is OGM, an L1 quest, which is about, which is about the system of OGM, right? A, you know, a level two quest, which is about, you know, a subsystem of OGM and a level three quest, which is about OGM exercise, so that we just have some taxonomy. And then everything can be a quest. But if we start saying, let's write level three quests, which are small, and I, are trying to change something in the world and then dr and then feed it upstream, maybe that starts to get us into just an organizing structure of emergence and we, where we can connect these things, right? Because I think that's the, that's part of the piece is how did all of the quests work together to create oh. a, a holistic change it, agenda, if you will, ultimately. I right? think we have, from what I understand, and I'm not involved in all of them, but there's several quests underway that yes. were begun over the last six months within OGM that were quests to free Jerry's brain or, you know, quests around the Kiko lab systems approach to things in terms of flow. So I, I think that we do have several quests going that are under the umbrella, directly under the umbrella of the executional dimensions of OGM. And that's, that's a good place to start because we'll learn ourselves. But there are a few that seem to have things that are starting to reach out, whether they're grant proposals or other things that fall within the scope also. Go ahead, Charles. I, um, 
I've been, I don't know, the word thrashing around comes to mind a little bit. It might be extreme in, internally in terms of um, how to help move forward and how to respond to certain threads and, and um, um, in, in, in where I'm feeling um, drawn to the most um, does have a lot to do with my conversations with Pete and the uh, Collective Sense Commons and the communication channels. And um, uh, again, just sort of bridging, uh, getting a grip of an overview, grabbing the reins um, between the forum and now this matter most, which I, I see a lot of uh, hope and potential in. Um, but I would, um, I wanna try to measure how I come, come across here, but I, I'm feeling um, critical um, and um, wanting in regard to the follow-up communications and uh, leadership in regard to the workshop. So I guess that actually means I'm pointing the finger, which is um, not comfortable, but it, I feel it's necessary at least to shine a light on the lack of continuity and follow-up and communication um, in particular and in, in general in regard to you know, the convening of the workshop, the, the running and the, the harvesting. And um, it's just not really been there, frankly. And um, <clears throat> so I would hope that we can together get it there. Charles, I'll take, I'll, um, I'll take that, you know, that critique. I think, um, you know, the reality is in my world, the, the demands on time are exceptional. And, um, but I also recognize that that's not an excuse for starting something and not finishing it. Right. And, um, and I think that um, I, I, I agree. And um, I also recognize the conversation that's going on right now about um, leadership, the desire for it, but also in some ways the desire for, you know, Jerry's been, um, uh, at least in my mind, you've you've been pretty clear on let's have this be an emergent system and how do we create an emergent system? And I recognize the limitations of that when we're looking for the stewardship of something all the way through. And so so that's that's the tension, which is, you know, by declaring a workshop, I should have and and I take on the ownership of being much more um, active in the be beginning and end and that was something that was not planned for nor you know at you know capacity allocated for so i i take that and um so i apologize and i appreciate you shining a light on it can, can i just quickly add sorry jerry um i think it's actually quite simple this was finishing a bit of a thought which is which is um simply about communications and channels and just coming to the basic agreement of where are we going to talk about this um, and, and being able to have that accessible, known, and um, at least give the possibility for people to, to interact and engage around it. Mm -hmm. um, so a couple things. Uh, I didn't, didn't sleep all that well last night. Um, so one of the notes I made to myself in the middle of the night was on my to-do list to go look at the documents that you, Charles, and Joe very diligently worked on in, uh, in the Miro board to synthesize you know, team one's work, which I have not dived back into at all. I've been just, it overwhelms me when I, when I sort of think about it. So I've been avoiding it. Um, uh, yesterday, we moved my mom back to her original assisted living facility into hospice mode. Um, mm -hmm. so, so at some point in the next week or so, she's probably gonna, be, gonna die. Uh, so that's been, that's been a bit hard. Um, nice. And I really, and I, and I really want to sort of be here and, and actually doing OGME things is a fabulous distraction. So I should uh, sort of collect my thoughts and, and jump back in. Um, I'm, I'm a little overwhelmed by how many channels we have. Uh, so, and I, and I just realized typing into the chat here, I was, I was merrily looking at the, the links Pete uh, put in from Twitter and I'm like, oh wait, shouldn't we be on Mattermost instead of this chat? And then I was like, oh uh -huh. shit, I haven't, I haven't looked at the Mattermost I, for a, a day or two and I need to catch up there with all the other things I need to catch up on. So I was a little like, whoa, um, uh, kind of overwhelmed at this. At should I moment. just make a channel, Pete? I can Already. do that. And try to invite me again. I still can't get 
it, you still haven't checked into the metamost yeah because i i think it's getting filtered out by our our junk mail box and i can't find like when i say confirm my email it just doesn't confirm it so let's troubleshoot that um for you so matt so you can be on metamost because metamost is just like slack metamost only, only open well, source I, I thought and quite elegant and uh lovely it's Go ahead. good uh charles you you said make a channel or should i i can do it right now what? it's easy I, it's, I think it's there's quick. a i think there's a calls channel already no but uh, well the calls okay. channel which is for the open calls okay. on thursdays do we want to make a steering no. channel yeah, I, or whatever you want I, to call it. I advocate to have the steering channel and the open call channel be the same because we've started no. to open the steering call. I don't agree. I think this is the get shit done group. So let's. I, would even, I, I think the calls Charles. channel is a good place for get shit done. So, so I, I don't have a I, I don't care too much. I know I, I note that we hmm. already have three OGM ish admin channels one of them is calls which i've been thinking also for this call we also have the ogm values private channel um and then we have the ogm forum moderation team which i think probably it's also people, private which is also private so a brief thought which comes back to the conversation we're having right now which is the, the next thing i wanted to put in the room which comes out of the values conversation the values call we had which is that uh, we may want to have sort of at the beginning of every call, <clears throat> either in the invite and or at the start of the call, kind of a call intro screen or setup. And it could be visual. I would love it to be sort of a picture that basically says, hey, this call is popcorn style. And here's the owner of the call. Here's who's going to facilitate. And here's sort of expectations. Here are links to the media that we have, uh, whatever else. Uh, and then some calls are absolute getting things done call. And here's the agenda or a link to the agenda. And this is our objective for the call, et cetera, so that we can start to differentiate between the Thursday check-in, which is meant to be a bit about turning the soil and seeing who's here and what we're working on very intentionally, and other calls that are meant for actually you know, aiming toward a target. And our values conversation was super interesting and useful and was not a GTD call, it did not end up being that. So one, of the, so one of the things as I stepped into this call is I was thinking, oh, now that we've opened this up and it's more people than just four of us, like who owns this call and who's supposed to facilitate right now? Because I didn't actually know. Uh, sorry, Pete, go ahead. Um, I love it, Jerry. And and I want to add into that a little bit of participation and negotiation. So as a leader of a call, I would say, here's what I think this call is. Here's whether or not it's recorded. Here's what we're going to do with the recording. Here's the style of the call. Is that OK with everybody? And we either get all yays or we get, yeah, well, yeah, and then whatever. I think that's a good approach. So, and here's where we're going to put the chat and so on. <laughs> yeah. So, the queue, you? you know. <laughs> yeah. I think that really speaks to me what you just said, Pete. I think the more that we can just have little pockets of ownership, the better where people just own something and they're responsible for it. Once they step up and say, I want to do this, then we can say, why, you know, why isn't this done? Or there's someone to, to go to. Yeah, I, I mean, Lauren, I, I agree with that. And, I, and I'm going back to reflecting on kind of what, what Charles um, illuminated there, right? That was, that was a deficiency of not, not fully having um, ownership. Right of completing something and its and its fullness and what it, what does it mean to complete that that stuff, and I think you know part of it is us as a leadership team coming to grasp with capacity um, and capability um, and energy into the system, right? Um, and you know and those sorts of things. So I think we're gonna you know we're gonna have to wrestle with that how we disagree and is it just the amount of time you show up that gives you more you know, sort of more voice in the group or is it because of something else? So I think um, it's gonna be interesting. Yeah, and then can I just add a point about like how much of it is our responsibility to delegate ownership versus uh, um, have people assume it on their own? And I only say that because, and I, I don't wanna to get too necessarily defensive here because Charles, I do feel some of the same pull as you, but you know, I felt like I personally sent four or five pretty direct emails about what to do and where to put a lot of the um, 
artifacts from the group work that we did, but I have not received a single response on them. And again, I'm not calling out anybody specifically in this room for, for that. I'm just saying like, you know, I expected to, to there to be maybe a little bit more communication there. Quick question, well, speaking of would, communication. Yeah. Sorry, to... sorry, excuse me. The email it, mm -hmm. it was is sort of not really necessarily what we all agreed. I, I don't know. We didn't all agree on email or where's the forum? Is there a forum channel actually? I was trying to figure out and I haven't scanned through everywhere. Sorry to interrupt okay. Judy, but, but you know, is there a forum uh, area for, for exactly those communications? Okay. There, there wasn't, there wasn't. And so, you know, we had a meeting that, that, you know, and I think what we're, what we're, what's emerging out of this, and if, you know, if we could kind of pull back is I think the very first step before we do anything else is figuring out this, how to communicate. In a virtual, that, right. That's a very simple solution. Just make a channel for workshop stuff. Uh, but see, I think it, this is where I'm, I'm, I'm wondering, and I'd love to have, you know, Pete come into this. I've seen more slacks and more jams and more jives and more mattermost and all this kind of stuff go the route of uh, channel proliferation and then become nonsense. And I think what Pete's trying to suggest, at least as I understand it, is to limit the number of those things and to be intentional about it. But I, you know, again, Pete, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but I think, you know, that's where, I mean, all I've seen right now that we've done is I've got I've got 389 unread OGM emails that are in a box. I've got random discourse things that are sometimes respond to my posts and sometimes don't. I have, you know, so there's like, it's been proliferated to the point where we're overwhelmed by our own information stream and getting frustrated. Um, and I think, I think solving this is, seems to me to be a kind of a, kind of a core, kind of a core, you know, quest at the meta meta level is how are we how are we organizing our communication with each other and how are we communicating that to other people so that so we're all doing it the same way right judy then me i just wanted to respond to hank's comment because i thought your your question was clear and after receiving nothing from other tv people i called you know sent notes to people and said let's get together and try to pull our things together because we didn't do a great job at the event and we've had one lengthy discussion about that and we're, it's now sitting at the draft something that we can kind of modify review. It's just taking us longer because there was so much content and I feel bad about that in terms of the output but I suspect that for some of the other groups that was also the case. Um, and, and I think we're all individually collectively trying to be sure that we give the best quality input because we care deeply about how this is synthesized. And that makes us a little perfectionistic, which we know is um, perfect is the opposite of getting some things done if you try to get it too perfect. So that's, that's one topic. The second thing is I think that the communication channels and having a limited number is really important because it is proliferating. Mm -hmm. And I think having structure to the gatherings, sort of an understand, sort of a mutual buy-in before you even start. This is our purpose today. This is what we're going to try to accomplish, or this is what we're going to discuss, but not try to bring to resolution, would de-stress a lot of it. Um, a couple of things. Maybe we can call this platform creep, um, but we're we're certainly suffering from it. And ironically, um, I was pitching us as picking up and solving that problem for Jordan Sukut, the guy who's doing the steward ownership stuff, who I want to bring into the Tuesday call, maybe next Tuesday, if he's available to present the steward ownership ideas to uh, to this group, because I think that's a really important quest to, to build up a frame up a structure for OGM that would work. Uh, and then and then also just reflecting on the work products um, from the workshop. I think that there, I think, I think it's, there's a long distance between what we ended up with team wise separately and what we feel would be a finished product that, and I think that gap is daunting to all of us. I think that, I think that in different ways, the group see that they were contributing directly toward a solution, but there's, but, but I sense that there's still like a, like a, a big leap to get to a series of document statements, whatever else it might be, uh, uh, processes 
that feel like the kind of the kind of solutions we were looking for from the workshop. And that, that's just an open comment. It's like we're, we, we did an ambitious thing in a very compressed time that might have taken, you know, if this were a corporate client, you probably would have designed it for a week or three days or something like that. Exactly. Uh, we did it super accelerated with a mix of tools. A few people poured a whole bunch of heart and energy into the work products, uh, which I appreciate and which overwhelmed me in a sense, because I was I found it hard then to step in and catch up uh, and really get acquainted with the products and so forth. And, I, and one thing I don't do enough is I didn't say, damn it, I need a Zoom call with the people who did all this work to just catch up and have that conversation that would have gotten me there faster. But I didn't I didn't think to do that um, sort of early enough. Uh, so so all of that. Hamilton. Um, I, I just think we should just, you know, also be just recognize how big our ambition is with this thing and how hard this is going to be. And there's some principles that underlie this around openness and emergence that are messy, right? And like we tried to, we planned that workshop for six months, not planning it, but like, how do we do it? What do we do? What's the right amount of time? What's the right question? And it was, we, and finally we just, you know, and Matt and Jerry and Hank drove a lot of this, just had to take a guess and, and we made it work. So, and I know there's no attack on it, but um, I think this is progress where we, just the fact that we're having this call with us nine and having this conversation, don't let's just not lose sight that this is progress, right? Um, for this hugely ambitious undertaking, right? With just hugely intelligent, I'm over, I'm daunted just every call by the depth of experience and knowledge on this call. And if each of us were the the czars where we could orchestrate it and just and you and everybody else would just do what we said and it would be brilliant, right? It would be look completely different, but that's not what we want here. And so it's just hard, it's messy. Um, but this is progress. I don't know. Um, Lauren, George, do you want to throw anything in? Yeah, I just I had a suggestion um, that maybe each thing that kind of proliferates, each chat channel, maybe a chat becomes a mini quest and someone takes ownership of that chat channel and out of it comes some sort of document or something that's more official, so maybe people feel like it's, you know, I, I don't know how other people are feeling, but I cannot handle more chit chat. It's like too much chit chat everywhere. And I wanna feel like I'm making um, tangible progress on things. I don't, I don't wanna chat. Like I wanna produce tangible items. So maybe there could be a process. Maybe these could be like mini quests instead of like, large quests that feel like you're crossing the Pacific Ocean, maybe just like these mini quests that can add up into something. Um, and I was actually thinking that um, as we shape up quests or mini quests or whatever size quests thing they are, a quest might have its preferences of channels and might go then organize itself. And if it declares and, and gives us, if we have a table of contents that says, hey, here's, here's the quest on food, and soil and regenerative everything. Um, and here's, here's where their conversation is located. Then I, I don't care if they're on telegram and signal and smoke, you know, semaphore, um, that's, that's fine with me. But, um, but for us, we need to sort of narrow down and figure out where we're talking. Um, I, Charles, just back to your comment to Hank on, on the notices. For me, the OGM Google group list is still the default. And if, and if Hank had posted an exhortation in discourse, only, I probably would have missed it because I'm not well grooved into making sure I'm caught up on discourse. So, so I would have had trouble had it been only in discourse, seriously. I understand. Um, yeah. Yeah. I, um, I just wanted to uh, quickly mention, um, and I'm, I'm still unable to um, easily deal with the chat and Zoom on my phone, but I have made a mirror board, which is really just the beginning baby steps of, of a kind of... Um, what I've come to call a sandbox dashboard, which we had done for Kiko Lab with the Harvest Jam. And now I just started with a handful of frames so far, um, getting an overview on OGM. And um, I put that in the matter most, I mean, I, I, we can get the link over now to the chat here, but it, it's, it's in the Town Square channel. I just put it there, for example. Uh, on Mattermost, mm -hmm. so just FYI and um, inviting everyone to, to check it out and get, get in on it if you want. And it's possible, I, I don't know, but it's possible that a landscape, uh, an image that encapsulates the number of quests we have, the territory we're trying to cover, 
and all that might be very well adapted to Miro. And because Miro is pretty programmable and we have some black belt Miro coders like Max in the group, we might be able to connect Miro to some spreadsheets and to some other goodies where the actual data for whatever it is we're sucking into Miro is kept and curated. And that I can see that being a thing I would check to figure out who's where and what's up. Uh, Jerry, might, might be a different tool, but that's smelling like it could work. Go ahead, Matt. Jerry. Um, I want to just, again, honor the fact that Pete put a lot of time and thought into a communication beginning to think about this problem, like hours more than this call. And we have yet to have him um, actually tell us what he's come up with. And, and we've been opining around the edges versus letting the person who kind of did a quest share, share his thoughts um, before we started to critique it. So I don't know, Pete, can we give you the floor and just and say, help? I mean, I'm not even in Mattermost, like just help us understand what is this architecture and then we can, we can help you refine it. Um, thanks, Matt. Um, uh, there's, so I, I did, I, I did spend a lot of time thinking about um, the way OGM communicates and, and how best to help it communicate. Um, so, so thanks for kind of acknowledging that. And um, as an aside, um, I'm going to be a little bit verklempt, I think. Sorry. Um, as an aside, it was interesting hearing Scott uh, yesterday um, uh, in a Kiko Lab call. One of the things I love, by the way, is the fact that we, some of us at least, are participating in this kind of meshed uh, federation of, of organizations. And so it was yesterday, Kika Lab hosted me talking about CSC, and Scott ended up talking about how how he hated the uh, OGM infrastructure. I'm, I'm over dramatizing a little bit because I felt a little called out. Um, Scott made a very good point that, you know, he goes home and he, he can do email with anybody in the world. And he goes home and he can do a phone call, literally a phone call with anybody in the world, right? They don't need special technology. They don't need, um, you know, they don't need six different things, you know, et cetera, et cetera. I thought that was, it was interesting to hear. Um, and so it was after that call that I, I reflected a lot on that. Um, the thing that, that Scott didn't hear or didn't say, the, the thing that Scott didn't say was, I remember back in 1980, mm. small number, when, uh, when it wasn't a given that you could send an email to anybody. So, so back then, um, you couldn't just give somebody an email address and get them to, to hit it. You were either on CompuServe or you were on one of a bunch of smaller things. Um, maybe there was a gateway from CompuServe to UUCP. Maybe there wasn't. Maybe to talk to somebody on UUCP, you had to figure out how to get onto UUCP or vice versa with CompuServe and AOL and all that kind of stuff. So right now we're kind of in the mode where we have, we have different channels and it kind of sucks. Um, same thing with phone calls. It was it was so so poignant to me. Um, Jerry and I have been in a couple, been in one tribe, a, a telco tribe, talking about the nuts and bolts of literally telephone systems and switching, you know, switching systems and things like that. And the fact that you can pick up a phone and dial a number, um, all the all the like sturm and drying of how that happened and you know how it happened the way it did and how many people how many tears were shed about things that were lost in the process of coming to you know standards and things like that what the area code system should look like who should have plus one as a country code mm -hmm. um, the fact that there are multiple phone systems that have to talk to each other and somebody had to like you know, have knockdown drag out fights about, I think it should be this protocol or that protocol. Again, you know, a simple thing like a phone number, it, it seems simple to Scott and I appreciate that Scott can go home and he can send an email and it just works and he can make a phone call and it just works. It's like, you know, 
an unimaginably deep technological feat that that, that happened and and the loss of a huge amount of potential with like pots plain old uh, telephone service so anyway um we are blessed to be in the phase of discovery and in innovation around where we do federated chat systems like this, federated communication systems. So probably I should make a picture, but if I made a picture of what I think of for the OGM communications, there's the mailing list, which is for mostly for announcements and things of real time importance. So, um, so to Jerry's point, if you post something in OGM forum, not everybody's going to see it today. If you post something on the mailing list, everyone's going to see it today um, or whatever, you know, serves as their today. So OGM mailing list is kind of for announcements and real time things and much less so for conversations because conversations there get hinky really fast. Um, next, maybe I would put um, the Mattermost, which I call CSC Agora, uh, Common Sense Collective Agora. There's a lot of detail why Agora is stuck in the name there um, and why I, why I try to say CSC Agora instead of Mattermost. And, you know, there's a bunch of, of little detail. Um, uh, but anyway, there's so there's the mailing list, then CSC Agora, the Mattermost system. Um, it's for, I need to ping Charles about, you know, hey, when are we going to meet up later today? Um, or Jerry needs to ping me about, dude, I can't find the um, Zoom, the Zoom link. What is it? Um, or for keeping, you know, keeping kind of in the moment things and a little bit longer conversations. Um, it's also superb. Um, Slack and Mattermost are superb for being the replacement for the chat system in Zoom. Um, there's a hard-edged, there's a hard-edged fact that it's not stuck on Zoom. It's you know a separate window. Um, but as soon as you're in Mattermost, CSC Agora. As soon as you have a, a critical mass of people, I guess. Um, so far on Zoom calls, it's been me and Charles, which is thank you, Charles, for being there. <laughs> Who was on the last one? And thank you, Judith. <laughs> I, I appreciate that. Thank you. Um, uh, once you're there, it's like, oh my God, this is so much easier. Yeah. Uh, and so I know it's a big push to get to that place, but really once you get there, it's like, I don't know why we're using Zoom chat. Um, uh, Zoom, so the plus and minus, and this is another post that I guess I, I get to write up at some point or somebody can co-write with me. Zoom chat, it does that thing where it's not there before the call, it's not there after the call. Maybe you don't even have it because you didn't save it as you exited the call. Um, it does that thing where you can't go back and delete a, a, a post or edit a post. You know, it's like, shit, <laughs> I fucked that one up and I can't believe it. Um, uh, it Just does that quickie, thing. Yeah. So, sorry, it is handy to be able to save it as a single file. I will give it that. Yeah. Um, so I've kind of, kind of made a promise to uh, Charles to be able to extract um, uh, a collection of Mattermost messages in a channel to a, a text file. Um, I found code that does most of that, and all I need to do is tweak it up a little bit. So on we'll behalf of, of everyone, not just me. Right? Well, <laughs> it's a promise to you, though. That, that's why I will fulfill it instead of a promise to everyone, which means like, yeah, maybe I'll get around to it. Um, I could keep dinging on, on Zoom chat. The, the, actually, the other one is when you ping somebody privately and then it goes in your chat transcript so you have to make sure to pull it out if you send oh, that yeah. to anybody else so, so and then, just to mention sorry on that line judy um i did edit out your private ones from the one you sent over um, the court <laughs> thank you it wasn't you anything keep, in there but yeah i did that and then you keep <laughs> chatting to the same person instead of the channel or in, and, or and god forbid then you chat to the channel instead of a private person matt question for clarification mm -hmm. so the mailing list you said it's real-time things and announcements. 
Um, but CSC Agora, it's when you need to ping somebody or it's sort of in the moment communication when you're sort of, it's a live, it's a live channel versus a mailing list is a, is an asynchronous channel, right? Um, asynchronous. And not everyone. And not maybe, everyone, maybe they need to be switched in the hierarchy or something like that. I don't know. It, it probably does need to be switched, but a mailing list is something where everybody's going to see it within their day, right? The next time they, if they open their mail, um, which they may not because or, there's so many. So sorry, many. To, yeah. sorry to keep jumping in. Um, not everyone checks email. Yeah. And not everybody checks chat, right? So I think this is where, but I like what you're doing. You're starting to put some rules around it. So CSC Agora is I need to ping somebody. So that's the, that's sort of like, it's sort of like text messaging, right? Um, but it's a universal version of text messaging. It doesn't come to your phone. It goes through your chat channel. And it's an in the moment communication and all chat, all, all chat communications, right? These are all chat communications go through Agora. Mailing lists are for announcements. And what else? Uh, Mostly announcements, I would say. Yeah. So announcements come in, in two styles for me. One of them is, um, hey, everybody, the, the workshop is coming up. Mm -hmm. And I guess I, I, announcements. The other one is there's this really cool event I think you all should attend. And you know it's here. Um, and I want to make sure you see this because it's time sensitive. So I guess, I guess there's announcements that aren't super time sensitive. They're modal. Um, like we need to do this or change this. And then there's announcements that are actually time sensitive. Or can we say time bound, right? Because wouldn't you, yeah. if it was time sensitive, wouldn't you just use CSC Agora and, and ping somebody? Or are you saying- It's, it's a good question and something, something we should dig into a little bit more um, and maybe not on this call. Okay. Although I'd be happy to, but- I, I'm just trying to start to document the relate, like. The, document the relationship of these things because I think once we know these things, then we can give people here is the communication map, right? Um, yep. And then we and then we have to make sure everybody is in the right channels um, and and you know technically able to get in and feels comfortable using it and all that stuff. Yep. So yep. what's the third is discourse? Um, let's expand a little bit more on on Mattermost CSC Agora. Okay. Um, so it's for in the moment and chat. Um, it's also for ch chatty conversations. Um, and sometimes they get asynchronous. Um, and that's okay. It's, it's also a place where uh, there's a little bit of sociality uh, to CSC matter, uh, to the Mattermost. Um, we already have a coffee shop and an off topics channel. Um, so um, it's also it's also a place where we're by design kind of going to be bumping into other people from other organizations like Kiko Lab. Um, I feel like I should explain sociality and coffee shop more or No, I'm I'm okay. I always think I'm the slow one on this stuff, and I actually know what you mean. <laughs> <laughs> well, unless you know it, in, unless you've seen it, it doesn't make any sense in a way, kind of, right? So, coffee shop is also kind of water cooler talk, you know. Yeah, so there's a, there's a way of of being. I, I uh, the matter most is is uh, semi synchronous, so you can you can kind of sometimes you post there, and they're not going to answer for six hours or 24 hours or 48 hours. But sometimes you post there and they answer within five or 10 minutes. And then if you answer back within five or 10 minutes, you've started ramping up the synchronicity thing. And so Steven Kreutzer and I, um, uh, you know, he'll post a question, a tech question or something like that. Right now we're talking about, um, about the accuracy of uh, GPS accuracy in phones and web browsers. And, you know, so he posted a thing and I didn't get around to answering it for two days. And then I answered it and then he answered within half a day. And then, you know, I'm going to answer within a quarter day. And 
we're starting a, a, a faster conversation and then it can slow back down again. So chat is really good at that. Um, it's, it's even better than text messages. It's about like WhatsApp or maybe iMessage for iPhone folks. I'm not an iPhone person. Um, so, um, so then the next thing we have is OGM Forum. Uh, OGM Forum is a little bit more structured feeling than, um, than the Mattermost. Uh, and it's a lot better at memory. So we've got conversations going on. Sorry, I'm going to interrupt myself and go back to, to something. I, I think of these, these channels end up being, a, a lot of it is around synchronicity. Another, another part of it is around reachability and who's where, right? So if I want to make an announcement to say, hey guys, there's this amazing, um, uh, regenerative agriculture thing, you've got to see it in the next 24 hours. Mailing list. Yeah. Um, and once we get negotiated well enough, it would actually be a mailing list and maybe the regenerative agriculture channel on the Mattermost. Mm -hmm. um, if it was super important, like everybody wanted to see it, then it would be actually in the town square in Mattermost. And you can kind of ramp up the the urgency with which you ping people and it's really rude to to do it out of band but you can actually say hey everybody in the channel i need you to see this message as opposed to you you can actually push a message at them instead of letting them pull it so that's something where you know um hey everybody we had to change the call yesterday it's or tomorrow it's going to be at two o'clock instead of one o'clock. You know, that would be something you would actually push to people. Mm -hmm. um, so Mattermost has that ability when you say, you can say at channel or at all, it, it blasts everybody. And it's actually really rude. And then people, people who aren't um, uh, inculcated will do it and, and upset everybody. But anyway, so I apologize for a little bit of confusion there, but an announcement could actually go in both places and that would be a reasonable thing. And the reason you would put it in both places is because we'd have 80% of the people in in Mattermost and 80% of the people see their email, uh, you know, within 12 hours. So you want to make sure if you want to 100%, 100 you, you would actually hit both of them. And that probably wouldn't annoy people too much. Are you complete with that? No, go ahead. Um, I, I'm still going down the synchronicity thing, kind of um, chat and email have a, a fairly tight synchronicity and the conversations that you have there are, are relatively short. Um, in Mattermost, you have conversations that run uh, seconds to minutes to hours and maybe a few days kind of. Um, email is kind of the same. It's a little bit slower maybe, I guess. Um, the forum is really good at conversations that last months. Um, so I think I'm in conversations with George that have been over months in, um, uh, in the forum, not because we've been doing a good job at, I, I'm using that as an example of time, not that we've been doing a good job of carrying on a conversation there, George and I, but, um, but we have a, a number of conversations on the forum that are months long and they're not worse for it actually. Um, the one that we haven't built yet or added yet or negotiated that, God, Pete, do we need another channel, um, is a wiki. Um, uh, an organ a collective intelligence, a, a collectively intelligent organization needs a memory. Um, and the forum is not, it's, it's a place that has memory, but they're kind of dusty and not organized. And a wiki is a great place to have um, sense make um, since made um, memories uh, of distilled, you know, wisdom. So, um, so at some point we'll have a CSC wiki too, which uh, OGM is welcome to use, and I hope it uses. I'd love to give George the floor, and then I'd like to jump in a bit. George has been chewing on this for oh, a couple of years. Uh, you're still muted, though. Did you finish all of your channels, Pete? Pretty much, yeah. I made a channel for the steering group here, by the way. It's in there now. Oh, OK. Great, thank you. Is it a private channel or where? No, it's a public channel in, in okay. Is it OK that it's public? 
I think it, well, these calls are open, right? So that's what I thought. I just, it's, you it's know. It's okay with me that it's open. I think we could, if 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 and when needed, we have the, the values channel that's private. Sorry, I don't want to interrupt. Please, George, uh, go ahead. Yeah, George, go ahead. It's very interesting uh, to listen to not only to this conversation, but uh, all the conversation that's are happening uh, through the different channels, because uh, no matter what is our individual perception of what are the different uh, tools and channels are good for or better for, regardless, the users are using them for whatever they want them to do. Like uh, there are indeed uh, duplication of subjects, very substantive, essential conversations are happening in email that are not supposed to be. Very substantive conversations are happening on the discourse, on, on matter most, um, and largely, um, uncoordinated because well, we are not an organization, we are a network, so maybe it's not supposed to be coordinated, maybe just whatever is emerging uh, is, is good. Well, um, when uh, uh, Pete mentioned the telephone, that having a phone number, it's what a fee, uh, technical achievement. And I think that um, before it could uh, become a technical achievement, it was an achievement of coordination. Since the very beginning of humankind, as we became humans, and started having um, coordinated action to achieve, to accomplish anything um, up to 2020. Basically, there has been two kinds of coordination. And I mentioned this because at some point, Hank, uh, said something, if I heard well, about uh, the leadership, the delegation of, uh, of leadership. Uh, and uh, so that was uh, one kind of coordination, the top down that uh, either the boss told you, the king or the whoever was the boss, the strongest guy in the tribe told you that this is what you are going to do. Or in more modern uh, MBA versions of the same, that I'm going to delegate power and now you should be feel empowered because I delegated the power. So uh, in the last decade or so, a new kind of coordination is uh, emerging, uh, the bottom-up coordination in the various systems of uh, self-management, self-organization. And um, lots of the companies that I consulted to uh, trying to go self-management, one of the things that they uh, made as a mistake uh, thinking that uh, self-management means uh, no rules. Everybody does whatever they want to. Obviously, that's not a very effective method of, of coordination. So I feel that OGM is uh, somewhere in between because we clearly don't want to uh, apply. We are uh, horrified by the idea of anything top done. Uh, and um, we have not developed uh, our self-management practices. Uh, and so seemingly technical 
challenges, technical disorganization, it really comes from that in-betweenness that uh, we don't have um, effective self-management uh, guidelines or any kind of uh, using practices that uh, weren't replicating in the vast experience of next stage organization. Well, we can say that, okay, but we are not an organization. We are more like a network that is more conducive to whatever happens. Uh, but then whatever happens, that can also include that as we are organized today, absolutely nothing would prevent any uh, member of OGM, even if, uh, if, if we have such a concept that what is a member of OGM, but let's say that nothing would prevent uh, any of us who are showing up uh, on, on the calls or on this course, nothing prevent uh, them from um, opening a, a, a new, uh, using a new communication platform. And uh, because this is what uh, I am convinced that this is the best tool, this is the best and everybody should come here. Of course, I won't tell people that you should come here. I just set up a sandbox and then invite people. And if you fall in love with it, then uh, let's try it out that too. And in a sense, it's good because it means that um, we are getting familiar with more possibilities, different affordances of different systems. And if our purpose was uh, technological scouting, discovering the best uh, collaboration tools, then uh, this uh, borderlessness would be just perfect. Uh, but uh, what is happening when we are creating a new platform, uh, we are not only adding complexity to each uh, member that I have some moral issues with. I always uh, talk to corporate management that uh, you guys, if you introduce a new technology, it is a moral obligation to do whatever you can to reduce the complexity coming with the new, that the people have to learn a new interface. And uh, so reducing the complexity would mean that I simply do not open a new place without having very clear rules of engagement. Uh, because if not, what is happening uh, is not that we, it's not only that we increasing the complexity for everybody and uh, the, one of the implications of that is some people are tuning out because tuning out because they cannot put up, uh, they cannot follow all the conversation and one of the collective implications of that is that we are fragmenting the collective mind. We are fragmenting the collective uh, discourse. And uh, so um, I don't have a I don't have a solution. Uh, I clearly have a, a preference or priority, I would say, which is not the shiniest uh, tools to uh, use, but uh, first of all, what it takes to build the community. What it takes to build the community is uh, understanding also that uh, there is a progression from a borderless wide network 
with uh, no clear purpose and boundaries, from there to uh, some uh, purpose eventually emerging, some boundaries are eventually emerging, like becoming a living system. Living systems do have boundaries. And uh, when that happens, then we can start also thinking about self-management. Because um, a rainforest, a tree, uh, is any living system is, or body, is exquisitely managing the resources it needs and allocating those resources. How, do, how does the body do it? Well, that uh, our organs uh, have functions and they no, don't mix uh, the functions of one organ with the, with the other. So in a self-managing organization, uh, there are uh, roles. People are stepping into energizing certain roles. And um, so that's where uh, I come back, what I said earlier about the two kinds of coordination, top down and, and the bottom up. So the bottom up coordination, that's, uh, that happens by accountabilities. The accountability is the opposite from the corporate job description where you have a responsibility and then you get your salary. Uh, if I am in the role of, uh, let's say, uh, community knowledge ecologist, that role, just like any other roles, have a purpose a well-defined purpose, and that purpose, one part of the purpose is to uh, express through the uh, distinctive contribution of my role, express my support to the purpose of the community as a whole. That of course implies that the community as a whole has a purpose. and. Um, so then uh, my accountability, nobody tells me that uh, this is what I should do. But what I am telling you, my teammates, my fellow uh, OGMers, is that I offer to be accountable. I offer to be accountable so that you know, so that you can know what is that you can, you can count me on four, and it's through this network of accountabilities that self-organization is happening. And then, of course, uh, we can actually accomplish something. When accomplishing something is becoming uh, not only a wish, but something that we really want to go for. Thank you, George. Um, Judy, and then I'd like to jump in with a few thoughts. I just wanted to comment that I think part of what we're dealing with is the dissimilarity of different types of organizations. And we're encompassing all of them because OGM can kind of be all of them in many different ways. But we think about values. I see values and responsibilities as sort of the overarching core thread that defines our community's personality. And then go from that to different levels of what it is that we're attempting to do. And those will perhaps have different organizational approaches and different leadership or management or execution approaches. And my sense of OGM right now is we have a lot of people in it who are very self-aware and able to be self-organized to commit to and execute things and don't need to be told to do things, which means you don't need a traditional manager. You may want a facilitator or a coordinator, but I think when we start to get 
hooked up in the language of older leadership styles. It's less effective for our community and at least my vision of what our community would be, which is a lot of self-actualized people. And if anyone comes in who isn't, they're gonna learn from all of us by experiencing processes and ways of approaching things that they perhaps had not had the opportunity to do before. I like what George said about the different approaches to leadership and particularly the differences between thought leadership in my mind versus task leadership because different dimensions occur if you're conceptualizing and developing frameworks than if you're attempting to accomplish a certain discrete act or group of acts in a certain amount of time. And so to me, it's kind of like, how would we put together these different filters, these layers or contemplations to be conscious of choosing the appropriate approach for what we are trying to do. <laughs> and that's a bit challenging, particularly because I think what would make it easy is actually framing sort of the values and responsibilities, but that's one of the hardest things to do because it's sort of soft. It's easier to frame tasks and how you would structure organizations in a framework way than it is to frame values. But I think we made a good start despite not finishing it last week mm -hmm. in terms of hitting a lot of the, the key points. And I would find it helpful for us to, to sort of frame a little bit around both the values and what the different types of leadership mean or the different types of rules, because those are the things that will give us the flexibility to be the organic and growing organization that we want to be. So. Thank you. Um, let me throw a couple of things in the conversation quickly because they're sort of stacked in my head and in my chat here. First, um, we're, we're facing a, a classic, typical question of individual preferences and capacities, because some of us have more devices, bigger screen devices, whatever, and then we're trying to meet in the middle. And, and in the middle of this is what system will alert you? What will you actually notice, et cetera? And so often when I try to communicate with somebody, I'm like, okay, what, what, what did I communicate with them last in and what do they seem to prefer for like instant notification. I'm always doing that negotiation. And the world was much simpler in that, in that pastoral scene that, that Pete uh, described at the beginning of our call up. Remember when the phone system actually started working. Um, second thing is, um, uh, and I, I wrote this up a bit in the Rex Lab uh, hiring hall that I described, but I haven't really talked about it much here, but I see a lot of really deep, good thinking disappear into discourse forums, mailing lists, other places that are sort of private. And I like to urge people to post outside in, meaning <clears throat> make this a medium post, put this on your blog, and then just put a link to it in our conversation. We can chat about it in our, in our media, but I would love to see that the big, beautiful, sort of deeply held things be far more public than they end up being if we have really rich conversations inside. So what that does is it adds complexity to the mix because now, you know, there's, but, but it's the web. Links outside to posts is great. And, and I'm on several mailing lists right now that are having fantastic conversations. There's a guy named Chris Savage on one of them. And every post of his, I just want to see live outside in the world because he's such a clear thinker and he's solving sort of, you know, many, many problems for us. And then uh, the last thing is that we haven't really talked about social media and we haven't really talked about OGM and the future OGM platform, one of whose goals is to try to solve some of these problems. I mean, very clearly, an open global mind requires us to conquer some of this. Uh, and some groups like the Game B people are on Facebook. They have a really big Facebook group and uh, the community's there. And one of, the, one of the nice things about LinkedIn and Facebook is that lots of humans know how to use them and they're on them and they're, there's huge traffic and it gives you permeability to a huge audience. You know, if you, start, if you start getting a following on LinkedIn and I created an OGM group on LinkedIn, which I've done nothing with, which would be a really nice way for us to do some of our participation in public. So we haven't actually folded any of the common platforms into our infrastructure. Instead, we're using kind of a best of breed of private platforms that are lovely and, and, and that connect in ways that Pete hasn't had a chance to describe yet, but we're kind of off in our own field instead of 
having a conversation within the limitations of known platforms, but in, in front of much larger groups, which I think is useful too. Uh, but as we evolve what OGM is, one of my fears is that we spend so much time trying to rationalize, link, and figure out how to connect up matter most to discourse to whatever, that we lose the thread on the more interesting abstract conversations we're having about how do we create a shared memory? How do I take a node that's really juicy and interesting, memorialize it in my preferred way, and remember how to come back into the conversation around that thing? Because there was a chat or there was a, uh, what's, what's the, the hot social network right now that's, that's voice only? I'm totally forgetting what the name is. Sandbox, campfire, no, something else. Anyway, um, th th there's like a, a network that everybody's using, which, which is just recorded voice, right? Okay, great. Um, so how do we sort of uh, synthesize all those things? And I think Charles, you were? I, yeah, I forgot what it was. It's okay. Ah. Shared memory. <laughs> so where are we? What do we want to talk about now? Uh, um, I can, I could okay. add that I have, I have actually thought a lot about these things you were just mentioning, especially social media, not especially, but including social media. Um, I did put a little energy into LinkedIn just when you, when you made it, but you know, there's nothing going on, but I think it has huge potential. Facebook as well. I came to this conclusion like yesterday or the day before that um, a lot of us at OGM are on Facebook anyway. Mm -hmm. And there are a lot of these groups anyway, and it's pretty easy. Um, <clears throat> it depends on what, you know, we want, anyone wants to get out of it and then, you know, measure what you put in according to that. But anyway. I, think, I think eventually we want to be like ants and leave a trail, a chemical trail from LinkedIn and Facebook forums back to whatever the thing is that we've developed that works better and, and is more interesting. I think that's what we'll do. Um, so maybe it's okay right now that we're not in there having conversations, but it would, it would help sort of stimulate a lot of this. Um, oh, good. Thanks, Pete. Uh, any, uh, any final thoughts? So we should probably just wrap, wrap this call um, around where we are. Um, yeah, uh, I have some quick, quick reflection on, on what you said about uh, social use and social media that, uh, yeah, if we would uh, start doing that right now, uh, they would just create uh, more mess uh, for in terms of the developmental uh, logic of uh, OGN, but I am uh, very passionate about uh, to getting to the point where uh, we do want to uh, widen uh, and uh, reach out. So from my perspective, the point is when uh, we have uh, what I would call sufficient coherence, sufficient inner coherence, that when we reach out to the public uh, with the intention that um, we invite back people who are really interested in what we are doing, that then we, when they join us on discourse or whatever is the home base that we do have a home base that we polish and make it uh, easy to navigate, reach coherent a reflection of our collective memory. Then when people from the social media are start uh, showing up because we are curious that what, uh, what do these guys uh, cook? Uh, then uh, the kitchen will be full, well stacked, uh, and uh, ready to welcome our guest. So, and uh, I mentioned this uh, role, the community knowledge ecologist, um, by probably not totally by accident, but uh, th that I named that as a role, but this is the role that I am playing, uh, playing uh, in, the, in the companies that I am working with, uh, but that's, uh, that's a significant investment in time. So I, I cannot uh, offer to, to do that, 
I've been doing it professionally for uh, a couple of decades. Um, but uh, if there were uh, people with an interest to form an OGM knowledge ecology team, then uh, I think that we could develop uh, a framework uh, for the development of our uh, collective intelligence. I, I think this is clearly that, a quest, uh, a quest the, that OGM needs to form up. I mean, a knowledge ecology quest is the given for me. Um, so I think that that's in our future. Sorry, George. Uh, mm -hmm. Two things, I have to change rooms. Uh, so I'm gonna go dark, but I'm still listening. Uh, second thing is, George, have we tried really hard to troubleshoot your audio? Is it your device or your connection? Because you are always very clippy and hard to understand. And it's, it's really difficult. I have to focus three times harder than normal to hear you. you know? I'm not having the same problem, Jerry. Really? I am. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's not as much of a challenge for me, perhaps, but it, I hear the, exactly what you. I'm hearing digital are, arti digital artifacts through your yeah. through your connection all the time, yeah. and your your yeah. video is very jaggy for me. It it tends to improve, George, when you when you remove your video. So it could be. Unfortunately, I think it's, I think it's CPU. bandwidth hog. So it might be your, it might be the CPU, whatever device you're using to connect might be, uh, and if you have a, a a smartphone or something else, you could use that because the. Uh, you know, the, whatever the more recent device you have probably has the better CPU and better camera on it. Um, but sorry, I, I just wanted to, because to, to, I want to hear what you're saying better. Uh, Pete, then Charles, then let's wrap the call. Um, this is a, a tricky thing to say. Um, uh, because we're talking about proliferating tools. Um, and uh, I have a lot of compassion and uh, I feel a lot of responsibility for not making more tools and more channels. Um, having said that, and having said that, um, today I started creating an Airtable that's got kind of a list of the things that I think the OGM steering group should have on its, on its radar. Um, we're, we've got enough things that we're not keep we, we don't we don't know what they are anymore at this group um, so I don't care that it's their table but I think we probably start to and I don't care that it's their table I think our table is probably a good choice Miro would be an okay choice too but I think our table is actually better for reasons I could discuss anyway I started creating an air table I'm gonna put a link in the no, well actually I'll do it I'll do it here in Zoom chat. And then I'm also doing this over on the- Mattermost. The Mattermost. Um, FYI. So I, I wanted this group to know about it. Um, uh, I also have a link. The Medium link is to a similarly, it, it's a generic tool or a generic template for a similar kind of tool where a supervisory group, a, a management group, is kind of wanting to know the top level um, project statuses. Um, so it, that it's a similar pattern. Um, so FYI. And of course I'm muted. Um, okay, Charles. Uh, yeah, I was trying to get my note together. So I guess two things, I'll try to be brief. Uh, one is George, I'm really resonating with this knowledge ecology uh, working group or team idea. I also just, it occurred to me, I think this would be more suited, better suited for CSC, Collective Sense Commons perhaps than, than OGM specifically, I think for a variety of reasons. I'm not sure that the OGM itself has the specific energy for that, but it could be, I, I'm open to whatever works. Um, my other thing is, is just to shift over to um, an email thread that, that we're having Jerry and a few of us, I guess it came out of this call and split, split into talking about values and leadership and stuff. I'm, um, I, I'm, I'm just curious uh, about the metaphors that have been kind of flying around. And then I did go back and, and read your uh, entry for the workshop talking about um, like the starter inoculation type of um, uh, metaphor. And I wanted to just try to 
get a little more focus on on what's uh, and then th there was also the question of um, the chaos, you know, kind of as uh, potentially as a default, you know, for each. So sorry, I'm saying a bunch of things here. The, the other thought that just occurred to me: the calls on Thursdays, the main OGM calls, are, it seems to me, the engine driver of OGM. It's sort of it's sort of the heart and the root of of what goes on, maybe. Now, maybe that's not true anymore, but that's kind of how, you know, that's sort of the, the, the anchor, the, the consistent groove, arguably. Um, there's lots of other stuff, but that's kind of the, the main line, uh, maybe. And um, so in terms of the setting up of, of that um, Petri dish, or, you know, again, there's so many metaphors I found jumbling up in the blender, but, um, so that's kind of a, an open question, you know, what's, what's the real intentional conscious approach to, to initiating those calls, to convening, you know, holding those spaces each week with consistency? Um, and then the question about the popcorn, you know, and the cues and all that. Um, in, in light of or in contrast, potentially to the sense making aspect and the harvesting and so forth. I think that's enough for me now at the end of this call, but um, I just wanted to place that kind of directly uh, to you, Jerry, in particular, but to anyone as well. Thanks, Charles. Um, my head is full of stuff that I need to go read and catch up on and, and address and, and adjust. Uh, so anyone have a closing thought for this call? Lauren, it's probably bedtime for you. They wore me out last night. <laughs> Oh, we went six hours. <laughs> oh my God, seriously? Six hours. Yeah, I just want to say I'm really, was feeling, I'm really feeling George and his um, need for boundaries because I'm really feeling need for boundaries and some rules. Because I think that, um, you know, from listening to, to Scott, I think that boundaries and rules actually can um, create an explosion of creativity and yeah. make people <clears throat> feel a little safer. Agreed. Uh, can someone paraphrase a bit of what Scott was bringing into the conversation uh, more than Pete started? I can. Please. Um, so um, Scott, he and I, I, I can actually just give you a link. I did a five minute wrap of his presentation, if you'd like. Um, That's brilliant. Thank you. I'll do that. From yesterday? No. Uh, from his oh, thinking, oh, uh, his oh, boundaries see. and thinking it. inside the box. Yeah, yeah. I, it's, it's well worth listening to since I've been uh, listening to uh, Scott. I have, I, I feel like my um, system's thinking is much sharper actually. So. But I, cool. I think Jerry, you were also asking about what Pete was referring to with the conversation from yesterday. Yes. Yeah, and, and yesterday, I mean, the, the simplest takeaway was literally that Scott drives towards simplicity in his own processing of everything. You know, he starts from a bigger and he filters it and then he filters it again. And that clarifying process not only clarifies, but it makes it more absorbable or actionable or whatever else comes from that. And that was one of my key takeaways so in part, he wanted to not overstructure the many dimensions of OGM because he saw the Thursday meeting as the core of OGM, that open exchange that triggers lots of thought, leads us to go away and think about various threads that came out of that and perhaps then form other connections or conversations around those things. So. That was kind of my takeaway. Go ahead, Pete. I, I found it to be oversimplifying myself, but but I was listening from another lens. But go ahead, Pete. I, it, it was, so I feel bad. Um, and Scott, if you've watched this, I'm sorry that we're um, uh, <laughs> discussing you behind your back. Uh, it's not. Um, we're trying to solve for this, so. Yeah. Uh, it's not. Um, we're not hiding from you and, and saying saying things about you. I think we're trying to bring you into the conversation for what it's worth. Um, uh, he I, I he was really frustrated that we have a, what he 
he sees of sees as a proliferation of multiple you know multiple channels you know the opposite of simplicity and is frustrating to him and causes him to pull back so you know he doesn't really want to participate in that um, um I, I wanted to say actually maybe i can say another thing if i can think of it real quick which is um so two things one of them i i hear matt's frustration um and jerry your frustration it's like geez we have way too many places to to talk i think maybe and judy is a good exemplar maybe once once we it's it's not that many and it actually reduces your anxiety once you kind of get a little bit of practice you have to do put on the training wheels and and practice a little bit and adjust some daily rhythms a tiny bit i think um it there is it's not actually that many um i know it seems like a lot from the outside once you're kind of inside and it, it makes sense it i think it's it's stress reducing not stress inducing um the, uh, the the main thing i wanted to say though was what a, a big part of the energy and i guess this counterbalances with scott's energy and i really appreciate his his observation that the thursday calls are super generative and that's good enough for him you know this is all we need to, to be in fellowship with people for two hours on thursday mornings means the world you know and is it's a wonderful jewel that you know we could just take just live with that um i i think that makes sense and i come from a different place which i and i and i pr try to project this back into ogm because i hear it from ogm a lot of people in ogm say there's the world is in a lot of trouble and we need as much collective sense making and especially collective action focus collective maybe decentralizedly coordinated action but it needs we need action now um i had this call with vincent uh, so i am a person of age more or less um vincent is not yet a person of age he's he's a youngster um so he's like pete i don't know about you but i've got to live on this planet for another you know 60 years or whatever um <laughs> and it's not looking so good so i have a lot of energy vincent says i have a lot of energy about fixing stuff as soon as possible and i have a little bit less than he does because i'm not going to be living here for 60 more years it's only gonna be 30 or 40 um hopefully uh but that's still the energy i have it's like uh we need to get out of our own way um we have a lot of potential here a lot of the people have an interest in action and as a group if we can bias towards action with some you know what i think of as fairly simple communications tools processes um you know project planning project um, management which can which is going to be multifocal um uh and different in different places then the world is going to be a better place because we do it and i think that's what ogm wants and so i try to reflect that energy back in ogm let's get shit done um thank you pete let me throw three things in real quick and then we can wrap the call um, one is the sort of the idea of the pastoral days when there are fewer choices, but also what George said about how communities just can aggregate, like where the cows walk, where the cow paths happen is where nature sort of ends up. And people, communities will build around really crappy tools if there's really good community. And there are some communities that are stuck on really ancient tools because that's where they were born and the tool is not well adapted to their, to their conversation or to their goals. But getting off the tool is at this point almost impossible because of habits, because of that, that's where the community lies. Uh, second thing is, it used to be that when I started some group or initiative, I would start a, a mailing list and a wiki. And I would try to keep it to that. And there weren't that many choices because I wanted the transient conversation. I wanted the stock and the flow. And that was it. I just wanted a stock and a flow. I only wanted a stock and a flow. I didn't want a whole bunch of, of other things. And then when, when, uh, when Slack shows up, I'm like, oh, crap, uh, because I have a hard time keeping up on Slack. I'm not a great conversationalist on Slack. And then I lose what channel something happened in. And I, I've been on threaded discussions forever since the well, since Pico span, since all that stuff. And I have a really hard time participating on threaded discussions because I can't catch up and I feel like I can't post unless I've caught up, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Anyway. Um, all this back to say that what we might, what we could propose to OGM is, hey, we have a core set of tools and it's these. 
and then we have a sandbox. In the sandbox, there's no rules. You may be asked to log into 15 different things because part of what OGM is, is an exploration into platforms and tools. So if, if you enter sort of the wild and woolly sandbox or the, or, or the, you know, the, the, the dark forest or whatever we wanna call it, um, that's where you can go. That's the place to go do tool proliferation and don't worry about it. But our, but our community and our conversations and our work groups are using these three tools. And I don't, we will, you know, we'll, we'll figure out what those three tools are, but I'd rather, I'd rather have some, some predictability and some stasis on that for a little while until we then migrate to, hey, we've discovered in, this, in, the, in the dark forest, a better combo of things. We're going to try to move to, you know, some new, some new combo and that this kind of move won't happen very often. But I think, I think acknowledging a core, choosing a core and directing our main conversations into the core is pretty essential toward not losing really important participants like Scott and a bunch of others who are, are justifiably feeling, you know, uh, uh, platform fatigue because because I'm on everything now and I, my, my device is slowed down because of it. I can't, you know, can't log into them and I certainly can't make the rounds. I feel like, I feel like my day consists of multiple times like a doctor going around the ward uh, doing the rounds so that I'm caught up on the socials, caught up on the other kinds of things. Go ahead, Charles. I love that metaphor. Um... I mean, yeah, I have a similar thing. I think, you know, I know we're trying to wrap up. I'm, I'm anyway doing the rounds. I wanted to capture that in my notes though, the doctor rounds. So, um, okay, so, um, beat recording is coming. <laughs> oh yeah. Um, that, that relates to, this is what I forgot earlier. So it's just a bunch of stuff. I'm just gonna pack in really quick here. Um, I'm doing these rounds anyway, to some extent, not really systematically, not, not consistently yet. And I don't know exactly what I'm signing up for in this experiment now with Pete and, 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 um, and the, the OGM forum, but I'm, I'm doing this anyway for my own sense making. Um, and George, I want to acknowledge this uh, wonderful phrase, um, porting that you have offered, which uh, is fascinating because it has your name in there. So the idea of porting and <laughs> reporting and um, it, 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 it's, it's the knowledge ecology right there. I, I, it, to me, that's what it is. And, um, and so I'm getting my spidey sense making and, and um, getting into sort of crawling and weaving mode between the channels and the platforms. And for sure, this is on behalf of, of anyone who, who cares at all and wants to pay attention. So maybe that's enough for now on that. Um. So I'm just typing one last chat in here. Uh, personal knowledge ecologies is now a really big thing, um, at least in my radar. And it would be fun to invite those people into OGM and to have an appropriate container to have the discussions about what's, what's the difference between the, you know, Rome-like tools, brain-like tools, whatever. What's the difference between subtle costing methods and other methods and memex and how do the, you know, and Doug Engelbart's visions and how do the, that all, that all feels, PKE feels like a, a really juicy OGM quest of sorts. Uh, at least, at least for generative conversations and inviting interesting people in. And PKE is the, the origins of Kiko Lab. That's the uh, practical knowledge ecology, which is funny. Yeah. <laughs> and it should be interpersonal knowledge ecologies, not just personal knowledge ecologies, but many people are very focused on just their own settled custom, right? The, the, many people are just trying to figure out how to get their arms around the flood. Um, and, and my critique has been, we have a whole bunch of flow tools and not enough stock tools. We just don't have tools for shared memory, but we have more and more every day flow tools and we're just drowning in the flood because every flow tool means your rounds includes more tools to come up on the flow with. You have to catch up and, and there's no way a human can do all of that. Um, all right, uh, Judy, question, last word. Well, this was a question actually. In terms of the proliferation of personal knowledge ecology, how does that then tie back to the collective intelligence of the OGM concept? Are they all feeder streams to it? So everybody wrestling with personal knowledge ecologies, in particular, those who have an intention of making an interpersonal knowledge ecology, so that it's more federated, linked, connected, whatever you wanna call it, is doing beautiful groundwork for what OGM can be ought to be. <clears throat> so, I, so I would love to figure out how to harness those, those people's energies because there's a whole, whole big bunch of them out there doing this kind of work. Well, on the discourse forum, there is a topic that I started with the title uh, Simasis, uh, which is the Simatasi system, 
that is my um, project that has uh, changed since then. Uh, it became Weiser Vid is the name of the project and it's developing a stock platform. It's developing a knowledge ecosystem through three types of uh, families of use cases. The first is the personal knowledge ecosystems. The second is the interpersonal. And the third is the large scale knowledge ecosystem. So these learning journeys are building on top of each other. And I am still in the process of uh, defining the requirements for each of the use cases. Uh, so I will update uh, that uh, concept paper in the next coming uh, days. Actually, um, I plan to use my winter writing retreat to make the project fundable. Fabulous. Cool. Well, we have help here. I know that Lauren's pitched in a lot on, on, your, on Simesis and so forth. So. Um, Let's turn it into something. All right. Um, thank you. We could we could keep going, but let's get back to our days. Thank you so much. Really See you it. in uh, Miro and Mattermost and elsewhere. See you on the too many platforms. Thanks. Ciao.